What does that even mean, Bowers Game Cardinar? Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game preview, another special Kickstarter preview. Today I'm very excited to check out Creature College from Happy Otter Games. This is for two to six players, ages eight plus, so I'll take about 45 minutes to play. And in Creature College, you're going to be a kid at a Creature College trying to win the Creature College Cup by essentially bidding on creatures, using those creatures to battle your opponents, gaining cool special abilities, and trying to gain the most victory points. That's pretty common in a lot of games. Uh, this one has quite a few moving parts and mechanisms for a family game. Let's open it up and check it out. Alright then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Creature College. Now before we get started, I do want to mention that this is the promotional copy I have in front of me. So take everything you see here with a grain of salt, even though as you can tell, uh, this is probably very close to the finished copy you're going to get. It is uh, probably the nicest prototype that I have gotten. So first and foremost, we get our handy dandy rule booklet. It is, let's see, I think it's about eight pages, seven pages, double-sided, full color, full of pictures, illustrations, examples, all that stuff you like to see. And it's a very well done rule booklet to have you up and running in no time at all. And this is by no means a complex game, so hopefully I can uh, get you get you running right here. So in Creature College, what you're going to be doing is you are going to have your own little creature, and you're going to be uh, recruiting other creatures in order to gain victory points. You're going to gain victory points by either uh, taking victory point cards or uh, fighting your opponents uh, and gaining either the green gems, which will give you points, or the red gems if you lose, which will lose you points, and also uh, by potentially completing your secret mission and then moving yourself up on this track right here. But that doesn't make any sense to you at all, so let's go over the components, we'll get into the gameplay, it'll make a lot more sense. So first and foremost, everyone's going to get one of these nice little boards here. And as you can see, these things are... These things are thick, sturdy boards uh, that are going to have a bunch of stuff on there. And I'll, we'll go over the boards real quick. So everyone's going to have a secret mission that they're going to try and complete. And uh, it will look something like this. You're going to get three at the beginning of the game. Then you get to pick which one you want. Some of them will be easier to complete and they'll give you less points. Uh, so here for this one, you would need to move uh, your different tracks uh, this many spaces. So you'd need to move your earth track one space. You'd have, need to be on at least the one. Uh, the air would have to be on at least the four. The red would have to, the fire would have to be on at least the one. And the myth, the green, would have to be on at least the one. If you can do that at the end of the game, you're going to gain 20 points, which is a pretty good deal of points, because as you can see, you're going to average, you know, around maybe 50, 60 points, to, uh, depending on how large the game size is, you know, how many players you're playing with. Uh, next, you're going to have an ability, and just like the secret missions, when you first start the game, you are going to get three of them and pick which one you want. So let's uh, let's take a look at some of the abilities so you can get a feel for them. Uh, start the game with a battle card, which will help you uh, battle your opponents, or potentially battle Kevin the Gigapig, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Take two battle cards and choose one, add plus two to your water track. Uh, which is pretty good because it's going to immediately give you some points. And it also, if you have a mission that perhaps needs some stuff on the water track like this one, I mean, you're already ahead of the game, which is great. Uh, we'll go through a couple more of them. Uh, plus two to water in battle, plus two to earth in battle. So these are persistent effects, and you'll definitely want to focus more on earth then because uh, you'll be able to battle people a little bit easier. And so everyone's going to have an asymmetrical ability, and you'll have a different ability uh, pretty much each game because there are you know quite a bit of these ability cards and likewise quite a bit of the mission cards. So you'll pick one, you're going to put that one face up, so we'll just randomly draw one, and say re-roll the battle card dice, that's a pretty good one, and then your secret mission is going to go face down, because obviously you don't want people to know that. Uh, next, uh, everyone is going to have these bidding tokens right over here. They will be numbered 1 through 9. Mine are not in order because I like to mess with people and everyone else puts it in order, but I like to put them in not in order to kind of screw with people a little bit. I'm going to get these cards out of the way. Uh, these are what you're going to be bidding on when you bid on creatures throughout the game. So when you play the game, there will always be Generally, there's going to be one more creature than there are players, unless, of course, you're playing six players, and then there'll be six creatures out there. And these are the creatures that are going to be out there. They are as part of these creature decks, which are up here. Uh, so the important things to note on these is some of them are going to have different numbers down here. Uh, so this is going to have a five in battle, and also it is a red, so it's a fire. Uh, so if you were to bid on this and you were to successfully win this, then this card is going to allow you to have five battle later in the game at some point, which is a good deal of battle, and also, it's going to allow you at the end of the game to uh, to move up one on the track right here, uh, which is nice because that's how you're going to complete your secret missions. So if I if I did win this one, I would. Uh, so let's just say uh, we do. A little, well, I'm not going to go right into the bidding right now, but let's just say I win this by putting my eight there. So if I win, Ray, 
I now have this card. I would put this 8 face down because I've used the 8 and now I can't use the 8 the rest of the game. And this is going to go upright next to my board. Also, I would update my fire track 1, so now I would have 3 points at the end of the game. And also, I would have this guy to potentially do some battling later. Everybody else would choose their cards. And then you're going to decide player order. That's going to go uh, based on who bid the biggest number. Um, and how this works is the bidding system is a little bit interesting because uh, if you go first and you bid on something, you can be outbid. So let's just say I put this 3 here, then somebody comes up and they say, I'm going to put a 4 here. Then you're like, oh crap. So you're going to take yours back and then you're going to bid on something else. But you're always going to get a creature. You are go never going to get the shaft. The creature is going to be ranging from numbers 1 through 5. They're going to be all the different colors, so blue, green, red. Uh, and then there's also going to be wild wild creatures. Let me see if I can find one. These ones are incredibly useful. There's Kevin the Gigapig. There's two Kevin the Gigapig because I didn't separate it. So this one right here is a wild. So you don't have to say which one. Uh, so when you get this, you don't immediately move one of these. At the end of the game, though, uh, you can move whichever one of these you want one point. So that might help you complete a secret mission or gain a bunch of points or do various different things. But there are wild cards as well. So that's important to note. So once the bidding round is over, uh, in, or in turn order, you're going to roll these two dice right here. The first one is going to have numbers 1 and 2 on it, and then this one's going to have various different symbols, and we'll get into this symbol in a second. So we'll roll both of them up, and so now we have a choice to make. So our particular choice for this one would be to take one battle card, and we'll get into the battle cards in a minute, or to take one victory card, or to take one of the element track cards. And uh, this is a good time to go over these and show you how these are going to work. So once you get to this point, you're going to have a decision to make. So first, they're going to be battle cards. And these are generally going to have uh, plus one battle point, double your lowest card, plus three battle points, double your lowest card. Some of these can be very useful. Now, these are going to be used in battles both against your opponents, but also against uh, Kevin the Gigapig, who we I promise we are going to get to in a minute. Um, so that's going to be the battle cards. Now next you're going to have three of these cards to choose from, potentially, depending on what you roll. First one are going to be victory points. These ones are very self-explanatory. They are going to give you victory points at the end of the game. Very, very nice. Uh, you're either going to get four, fives, or the occasional, when you get lucky, there are actually some sixes in here as well. The next choice you're going to have are what are called battle gem cards. Now the battle gem cards are going to give you uh, more more gems when you defeat your opponents next to you. So this one would be a really good one. Plus two gems if you, if you defeat your opponents next to you. Or minus one defeat gems. Because sometimes you will get defeated. And uh, that will kind of mitigate that. So you'll ta be taking, generally earning more victory points. The last one are what are called the element tracks. And these are one of my personal favorite of the three. And these are going to give you bonuses uh, on here. So this would be plus one to anything you wanted. Plus two, plus two, plus two, plus two plus one. I believe they're all plus one or plus two. Uh, and these could be incredibly useful to you as well because you'll be able to move these guys right here. So these cards are going to go right down here in your research lab spot so everybody can see them. Your battle cards are going to go uh, either face down or in your hand so other people cannot see them. Now you're going to do this over three different phases right up here. So you're going to do autumn, winter, spring, uh, and then the game will be over. But as you go, you're going to uh, be moving this little tracker right here. So essentially, you're going to have nine auction rounds. So you're going to use all of your auction tokens. So, you know, once you get to this one, you can really kind of see how much you need to bid to win certain things. Uh, so once you get to the autumn thing, what's going to happen is if you have driven, drawn Kevin the Gigapig, you are going to have to fight him. Everyone is going to have to fight him, and he has a strength of nine, which is a lot of strength. Uh, if you lose, and everyone's going to be fighting him, you're going to gain essentially negative five points because you're going to get negative five victory gents. However, if you can beat the him, that's a very good thing because you're essentially going, you don't get to vain, gain any victory points, but at the same time, you're not going to lose anything. So uh, you're going to have to battle him. Generally, you're going to have to battle him in the autumn, the winter, and the spring, but sometimes you get lucky and you don't actually draw him, and in that case, you just move on your merry way. But you also are going to have to attack your opponents on your left and on your right. Now, each person is going to do this, and how this works is you get to decide uh, which person you are going to attack first, and then you are going to attack them with a particular kind of card. So you might look over there and say, hey, that guy doesn't have any water, so I might attack him with water. In which case, you'd say, I'm going to tap this card, but you don't say tap, obviously. Uh, you tap that card, and you're not going to be able to use that card in battle the rest of the game. At which point, people uh, 
now have a chance to go back and forth playing battle cards to see who can win the battle. And if you win the battle, you'll gain green gems, as well the other player uh, gains red gems, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then next, you're going to battle the other opponent that is either to your left or right that you have not battled yet. You're going to go around the table and do that, and then you're going to move on to the winner track where you will rinse, wash, and repeat. Turn order is going to be fluctuating. Uh, Monsters are going to be fluctuating, but you're going to continue to do this over and over and over until you get to the spring phase. Once you get to the spring phase, uh, you're going to fight Kevin the Gig Pig if, the, if he has come out, and then you're going to tally up your points. You're going to gain points based on winning victories against your opponents or potentially losing against uh, Kevin the Gig Pig. Uh, you're also going to gain points for your secret missions, uh, your track right here, and uh, your victory points. And as you can see, they have included a nice little victory slot right here which you can keep track of everything on. Uh, so whoever has the most victory points is going to be the winner of the game, and that, in a nutshell, is how Creature College is played. All right, then, Creature College from Happy Otter Games. Coming to a Kickstarter near you very, very soon. I'll be sure to post the Kickstarter link down below. Who might be interested in this game? First and foremost, if you were looking for a family game, this is definitely going to fit that bill. And there's a couple big things about this that are really going to scratch the back of a lot of people who like family games. First, the artwork is incredibly appealing. Uh, every kid that has seen this has been like, that looks awesome, that looks fun. And same with grown-ups. I mean, it's very appealing artwork. Next, from top to bottom, quality-wise, everything already in this game is legal with quality, the artwork, the box insert, the components, the rule booklet. As I mentioned in the middle part, this is the nicest Kickstarter prototype I have ever gotten. And I've done about 110 of these things. This is the nicest one I've ever gotten, and I'm assuming it's going to even bump up in quality when it gets to you guys. Uh, next, if you're looking for a, a family game that is sort of a step-up family game, this is definitely one you might want to check out. And what do I mean by that is many times in family games, you have very narrow decision-making. This one, not so much. There are a lot of choices and things to monitor in this game. What creatures do you bid on? What, uh, which bidding tokens do you use? Do you focus on specific colors and trying to complete your secret mission and gain a bunch of points that way? Or do you focus on the bigger numbers? That way you'll be better at battling your opponents and Kevin the Gigapig. Uh, and then when you roll the dice, do you get your straight victory points or do you re do the research cards uh, so you can, you know, gain those uh, the colors and move up your track at the end of the game? Or do you get battle cards because you want to be better at battle? There's actually quite a good deal of decisions and veering paths to make in this game. And that's not something you typically see in a lot of family games. Last but not least, if you're looking for a family game that's going to accommodate uh, a nice, very uh, varying amount of players, this is definitely one you might want to look into. A lot of games, two to four players, this one goes two to six, and I'd say, you know, aside from adding some time length, it does that pretty well. You're not going to have to make too many sweeping changes to the game. It's not like you're having to be learning different rules because you play two or three ver players versus six players. So that is Creature College from Happy Otter Games, coming to a Kickstarter near you very, very soon. Be sure to post the Kickstarter link below. Be sure to check it out. It looks like it might be your cup of tea. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. And in the comments below, let me know, Batman, is he a menace or he's a good for society? Personally, I think he's a menace. I mean, he's a vigilante, you know? <laughs> that was the preview for Creature College. For more reviews and previews, check back at Bowers Game Corner.